I dropped my cheating wife off at the nail place and then left town. Hey everyone, before I jump into the story, it appears that a lot of you are watching a lot of our videos but have yet to subscribe to our channel. If you would, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. It would mean the world to us and would really help support our work here on Tangle Threads. I thank you in advance. Now for the story. So, where do I start? My life has been a mess for the past few months. I never imagined something like this could happen to me, but it did. My wife cheated on me with our financial advisor, and I found out about it in the worst way possible. It all started one afternoon when I was at work. I work as a software engineer, and my job requires me to be glued to my computer screen for long hours. I usually leave work at around 7 p.m., and I come back home to my lovely wife, who always has dinner ready for me. That day, however, I left work early to pick up some groceries for our dinner. As I was driving past the financial advisor's office, I saw my wife's car parked outside. At first, I thought she was there for a routine checkup or something, but then my gut feeling told me otherwise. I asked her how her day had been when I got home, and she told me she was at home all day, studying for her certification exam. I knew she was lying, but I didn't want to start a fight, so I let it go. Fast forward a few days, and I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I decided to look around on her phone to see if there was any evidence of infidelity. It took me a while to find anything, but I eventually found some text messages between her and our financial advisor. They were flirtatious, to say the least, and mentioned some things they had done together that made my blood boil. I felt like my world was falling apart. I had been married to my wife for five years, and I thought we had a good relationship. I loved her, and I trusted her with all my heart. But it turned out that she was deceiving me, and worst of all, with someone I trusted with my finances. I knew I had to do something about it, but I didn't know what. I was hurt and angry, and I didn't want to confront her just yet. The longer I put it off, the more cold I became. After just a day or two, I felt a complete detachment from her. I mean, a 100% cold deadness came over me and I just didn't care anymore. It was intense and unexpected, but delightful at the same time because it meant less suffering for me. And by extension, it was about to become a lot of suffering for her. I knew my wife was going to the nail salon the next day. She always did her nails on Wednesdays, and I figured that would be the perfect opportunity to drop her off and leave town. I drove her to the nail salon and kissed her goodbye, pretending everything was normal. She had no idea what was coming her way. I watched her walk into the salon and immediately drove off and back to our home. I felt like I was in a movie or something. It was surreal. I quickly packed my things into a suitcase and headed off. My wife was all finished with her nails, but I wasn't quite out the door yet, so I told her I'd be alone shortly if she wanted to go grab a coffee at the cafe next door to the salon, which she readily agreed to. That is when I went silent. As I began driving out of town, I turned off my phone and disconnected from the world. I needed time to think and figure out what to do next. I ended up driving for eight hours straight until I reached my cousin's house in San Antonio. My cousin welcomed me with open arms. I told him everything that had happened, and he listened patiently. I stayed with him for a while, trying to get my thoughts together. I don't know how long she stayed at that coffee shop. I really don't care. I hate her. I just love that she had no idea that I had no intention of going back to get her. I kept her waiting for no reason other than to make her feel some of the pain she had caused me. It was childish, I know, but I felt like it was the only way to get some sort of revenge. Days turned into weeks, and I still hadn't contacted my wife. I didn't want to talk to her, and I didn't want to hear what she had to say. I was cold, and I didn't know how to deal with my lack of emotion. My family knew what was going on, and they were supportive of my decision to leave. They didn't want to talk to my wife either, and they all ghosted her. It was like she didn't exist anymore. My wife tried calling me, emailing me, and even showing up at my workplace, but I had already quit my job and blocked her on every platform. I didn't want to see her or talk to her ever again. Eventually, my mother reached out to her out of pity. She told her that I was okay but that I would be the one to reach out to her when I was ready to say what was going on. My wife was devastated, and she had no idea what to do next. The next few months were a blur for me. I got a job in San Antonio, and I started working immediately. I focused on my job and tried to forget about my past. At home, the bills were piling up, and my wife couldn't keep up with the rent. She had to look for another place to live on her income alone, which was significantly less than mine. We were on a month-to-month -month lease with our apartment, and apparently she was struggling to keep up with the rent. She tried to contact me to ask for help, but I had no intention of bailing her out. I wanted her to feel the pain of her actions. I got an email from the landlord and I told him I wasn't coming back and that he'd have to deal with her about the rent situation. I gave him no more of an explanation than that. I filed for divorce and my lawyer handled everything and had the papers delivered to her. I listed irreconcilable differences as the reason. I didn't want her to know anything. I figured she didn't deserve my time after disrespecting me like that. I wasn't sure how much she was suffering at this point, but it didn't matter. She did not deserve me. Finally, the day of our divorce hearing arrived. I hadn't seen her in months, and I didn't want to see her again. I put on my best suit, grabbed my briefcase, and went to court. I didn't even look at her when I walked in. The hearing was short, and the judge granted us a divorce. Again, the reason listed on the paperwork was irreconcilable differences, and there was no explanation for our separation. I had made sure of that. She didn't contest it. 
Obviously, by this point, she knew it was over and there would be no point. After the hearing, I walked out to the parking lot, and there she was, crying and pleading with me to tell her what was going on. She begged me to explain why I had done all of this to her, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. Instead, I simply told her to ask our financial advisor. I knew she would be shocked by my answer, and I wanted her to feel the same betrayal that I had felt. I didn't say another word. I just got into my car, closed the door, and drove off to my new life in San Antonio. I never spoke to her or about her again. Dropping my cheating wife off at the nail place and then leaving town was a rash decision that I made out of anger and hurt, but it ended up being the right one. I have a great life now and will be more cautious going into my next relationship if I choose to have one again. There are a lot of women in San Antonio. I may not ever get married again. I may just date until I die. Anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoy my story. That dude got cold quickly and stayed cold. What would you have done differently, if anything? Let us know in the comments. When you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell. Click here for more Tangled Threads.